G'day folks, Rob here. A uh, bit of an update for you all, something we've been waiting on for quite a while, but due to weather and other circumstances, it's taken a bit of time to kick off. Um, so no more nattering, flip the camera around on the phone and give you a gander. So we have some friendly chaps here who are starting to get ready to put in some retaining walls. Um, little matey over there, little butcher bird, looking for a couple of grubs. Um, but I thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick rundown what's going on. Um, out the front here, they're making a garden bed. So it's going to be um, 600 high, 600 millimetres, or around about two foot high. And we'll go from that end there all the way over here. And they're going to square it off. And eventually we're going to have um, native species, uh, grevilleas and um, bottle brushes in there, uh, just for the native birds. Uh, these wicking beds, that one there, the last asparagus one, um, it will be coming out, but they can build the wall around it, so I can do that later. And we can also get rid of this Chinese celtus that's in here, which is a right royal pain in the butt. So I'm actually going to try and dig it out roots and all, because it's the best way I've found to get rid of them. Uh, down here, they're putting in another retaining wall with a bit of return that comes out the front here. Um, just raising it up about 600 again, two foot, and taking it over almost to Pauline's fence line there. And just trying to level this off a bit and capture some rain before it washes out the rest of the retaining wall down there. After a wander down the back. Down the side here, we're getting a fence um, put up between us and Bevan. Uh, just a timber one for now. And then um, later on, Bob, uh, the owner, uh, he's going to come back and we'll sort out some sort of uh, other fence that goes from the rest of the property or from that corner post there, down the back. And they've already started to level off down the driveway here. Uh, we're getting a, an extension done to this little brick wall, going all the way down to almost to the end there, and um, just leveling all this off. With the um, main idea being, we're trying to get it all Hold the gradient to go so it creates a little bit of a valley through here and then it takes all the water from the driveway out the back and hopefully in front of the uh, lime tree down there a um, little bit of a garden bed so they've made a start it's friday um, i think they're pretty much well he's just um, using the digger down the back just to grade the back fence line and the back retaining wall and they'll be back next week to finish it off so I am royally chuffed that it started, so I thought I'd give you folks a little bit of an update. Um, and something else I've done this week, uh, the little seedlings that I started off last week didn't take too well, and these guys over here in a cracky, I went out and bought some seedlings to get a bit of a head start. I'm getting some burning on the leaves, so I think the uh, nutrient solution in there is just a little bit too strong, so I'll be watering that down by half. And yeah, um, hopefully they should take off after that. I just use the normal A and B that we normally do. Um, bought the seedlings at a store, washed the soil off the root, popped them in there, and Bob's your uncle. I'll just show you over the back there. A little volunteer tomato popping up in the rock that we're just keeping in there, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. I'll give you a bit of a look at the aquaponics. Just here with the aquaponics, I took out the large sweet potato that was um, cascading over the edge of the grow bed and I planted it out in a wicking barrel uh, next to the lemongrass and the moringa tree. So it's just going to pretty much all over winter there. We're not expecting any tubers, um, but we'll be able to cut some slips off and plant them out first thing uh, come spring. And just standing here, I noticed we have a section that I missed yesterday. So this is a bit of the vine that's rooted itself in the system. So I might pull it out and uh, plant him somewhere else. Uh, the other job we did was to trim back the uh, tomato and we've just got it out here on a little bit of a trellis with our little dodgy warning flags, <laughs> sweet potato um, slips on the end there. Um, and this is just so we can try and get it off the grow bed because it was growing all the way um, over to the other side. It was crushing some of the broccoli. Um, so we figured we'd get it out of the way and yeah, she should do okay. Um, doesn't look too stressed. Some of the leaves and the tops have already started to turn towards the sun. So, um, yeah, just a pretty basic idea, just trying to extend the growing space. And don't tell Bianca, but once that retaining wall goes in, we might end up with another bed or two over there for the aquaponics. Oh, we'll just wait and see. Um, the plants in the aquaponics, they're doing so-so. Come around here and have a bit of a chat about that. So the plants in the aquaponics are having a little bit of a nutrient deficiency, and I touched on it briefly um, in the last video. Now, the nitrate in the system is still through the roof, so we know they're getting loads of nitrate. But because things have cooled down a bit, uh, these little fellas just aren't eating the volume of feed they were eating. Um, the water temperature, I've mentioned this before, but it's down around 18 degrees Celsius. 
to 20 degrees, so it's good enough for them to eat leafy greens and things like that um, that I toss in there just to keep them feeding but they don't metabolize the high protein feed at that temperature. Please keep in mind, that's just these guys here, the jade perch, the Baku grunters, uh, other fish, um, they will metabolize feed at different temperatures. So just with these guys here, they come from a warm or tropical region of Australia. Um, so yeah, while we've got the nitrates in there, those other nutrients that are also present in the fish feed that goes through to the plants, they're not present in high enough amounts to keep the plants going um, full bore. So what we're doing is supplementing with iron and magnesium. They were the first two. I've also used some potassium bicarbonate to boost the um, potassium level and also add some buffering capability to the water. And I'll also be putting in some eco seaweed. Or, or sorry, it's not eco seaweed, it's the one from True Aquaponics, folks. Thank you very much, folks. And I'll be adding a little bit of that in there as well. The fruiting plants are still going great guns over here. Um, like the eggplant, we've got a number that need to come off. And the little um, capsicum or sweet pepper over there has a couple of fruit on her as well. I actually knocked her over yesterday, so I need to put a bit of a steak in there. So yeah, it's just one of those things, not enough feed going in the system, it does need to be supplemented. And I am hoping that I'm um, chopping the tomato back and also taking the sweet potato out. It's lowered the demand um, for some nutrients by those plants in particular. So they will be available now for the other plants. And the other thing I was thinking about doing is um, chopping back the dear old um, um, RG Amarillo over there. Uh, again, just to decrease the amount of nutrients it requires. Uh, well, it draws from the system. And the same again here with the eggplant. Um, I've just basically been waiting for these fruit to become ready to harvest. And uh, thank you again, Brian, for the seeds for those ones. Just quickly, uh, the little white powdery marks you can see on the leaves, uh, that's the leftover from the dipole. Um, I sprayed these guys again the other day with some dipole um, because we've had rain and it got washed off. And yeah, we just basically want to control the white cabbage butterflies on those little fellas there, if you can see them fluttering around. So, what I've been doing is, and I hope I'm in frame, let me just see here, yes I am. <laughs> All I've been doing is getting my little pre-packaged dipole, I weigh it out on my little mini scales, and bag it up into two gram lots, because it's 10 grams in a um, packet and a packet does 10 litres so I just break it up into two litre batches and I can reuse these little baggies over and over put that to one side and then what I do is I use the water from the aquaponics because I figure it's got no chlorine in it no chloramines and um, yeah, it's a bit of a foliar feed for the plants as well it just takes a while to fill it up underneath this drain Oh, so there we go, and the other thing, I've actually overfilled that a little bit, I might pour off a little bit. So I'm just going to pour some of this off for now, and then later on I'll add it back in there, and I can use it down the back. The other thing I've been doing is adding in a generous gulp, probably about a teaspoon or worth, of the uh, Dr. Bronner's um, mint liquid soap, it's a Castile soap. Popping it in and giving this a little bit of a um, swirl around. I don't want to shake it up too much. Just need to get all the um, powder from the bottom off. Get it mixed in. And then away we go. And I'm actually spraying all the leafy greens, even the beets, because I have still seen a few of those cluster caterpillars around. So that should be good enough. And that, um, the soap actually helps it stick to the leaves a little bit. Not only that, it might come in handy with those aphids down the back later. So just trying to get that on all the leaves here. So any of those um, little legs that I've missed will hopefully um, hatch out and have a bit of a feed on this stuff. So I'm also gonna get right down in the center of those cabbages because the last thing I want is the hearts eaten out. These little blighters. Now all the broccoli over here. So just before I go down the back and uh, spray the others, I thought I'd show you the aquaponic garlic. It's coming along rather nicely, I think. So I'm pretty chuffed with that. And that um, oregano or oregano has bounced back after it was ripped out so unceremoniously. 
and pop back in and the dill's doing not too bad either. So I will be posting a video on what we're doing with the backyard once the retaining walls are all up and we've worked out where we're putting beds and how we're altering the um, hoop house or the shade house down the back. So um, keep an eye out for that or you are uh, folks who've been following us for a while and are curious. You folks who have just jumped on board because you've seen the aquaponics videos have been rather popular over the last week or two. Thanks Chuck. Um, yeah, um, there will be more aquaponics videos coming. We're just dealing with some, uh, we'll say helping some family out at the moment. Um, just clearing out a shed that needs to be emptied full of engineering gear. So I'm pretty much all flat strap at the moment. Um, so probably no real uh, aquaponics videos, how to's and that sort of thing coming for at least two to three weeks minimum. I do have one that I'm trying to knock off on bell siphons and troubleshooting them, but yeah, just need to help the family out first and then we'll get back into the clips here on the channel. Uh, if you want to be notified, uh, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button down there and check the bell icon once it appears and YouTube will send you a notification on well, or whenever I upload a video and you can skip the ones that don't interest you if you're not here for the, um, the garden side and um, yeah, once the aquaponics ones are published you can jump on over and check them out. But I will pretty much will leave it there. The arm's getting tired and I didn't have to pop over to the shed again and do some more work there. So I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I will catch you next video. Cheers folks. Take it easy.